In the night of December 31st, 192, the urban prefect named Pertinax was suddenly awoken by the news that the Praetorian prefect and the emperor's chamberlain were at his door. Believing that the emperor Komodos had ordered him dead, he stood up to them to tell him that he accepted his fate. Instead, they told him that Komodos was dead and he was chosen to become the new emperor. Pertinax immediately approached the Praetorian guards to tell them the news of Komodos' death and promised a donative to soothe their disappointment. The next morning, Pertinax summoned the senate to tell them the same news. At first, they suspected that this was one of Komodos' tricks, but once assured that Komodos was dead, they cheered his jubilation. Pertinax then tried to fix the imperial administration that was corrupted by years of neglect and reinstated a heavy discipline into the Praetorian guards. However, the Praetorian guards did not like their newfound discipline and they did not receive the donatives that was promised by Pertinax, so they rushed to his palace to kill him. Pertinax tried to dissuade him with a stern speech before they stabbed him to death. The Praetorian guards then sold off the position to a man named Dutius Julianus who became emperor for a few months before he was executed and replaced by Septimus Severus who steered the empire towards a heavy militarization. He increased the size and pay for the army and then he launched many successful campaigns around the empire. He also wanted to bestow the emperorship to his two sons, Geta and Caracalla, but they notoriously hated each other. He tried to get them experience by having them campaign in Britain, but as soon as he died they promptly cancelled the campaign and marched back to Rome where they built barricades between each other. When their mother brought them together to make peace, Caracalla had Geta killed right in front of their mother and then he ordered a massacre against anyone that was remotely affiliated with Geta. Caracalla then marched his army around the empire in ancient Macedonian attire until he got to Alexandria where he got enraged by a puppet show so he initiated a massacre in the city. He then traveled to Mesopotamia to ravage the Parthian Empire before returning back to Rome where he was assassinated by one of his guards. His Praetorian prefect Macrinus then claimed emperorship with his son before they were both killed in favor of Caracalla's nephew Elagabalus who was used as a puppet emperor by his family. But he began to horrify the Romans with his erratic behavior. He put on a wig and drove out prostitutes from brothels so he could act as one. He even tried to search for physicians to cut a vagina into his body and he even called himself the wife of his male slave Heracles. He was eventually killed and replaced by his younger cousin Severus Alexander. Years later, a new Persian power called Assassinates attacked, forcing Severus to launch a counterattack that bombs through with heavy casualties. The Germans attacked the near later and Severus tried to pay them off instead of fighting. The soldiers were furious with his incompetence, so they killed him and replaced him with a general named Maximinus Thrax, who was very popular with their army, just not with anyone else. Under Maximinus's reign, the agents started to extort more money for the army, which led to revolts. In North Africa, a proconsul named Gordian and his son Gordian were proclaimed emperor, but they were quickly defeated by forces loyal to Maximinus in less than 21 days. In Italy, two senators named Popanus and Bulbanus proclaimed themselves emperors, but due to their unpopularity with the citizens, they were forced to proclaim the third Gordian as emperor. Maximinus Thrax invaded Italy to overthrow them, but he was stuck in a hopeless siege until his own soldiers killed him. Popanus and Bulbanus were later killed by their own guards in the same year, leaving a younger Gordian as the sole emperor of Rome. Thus, the year 238 is marked as the year of the six emperors, and three of them were named Gordian. Since Gordian was only 13 when he became emperor, he had to be ruled through his Praetorian prefect Timisius. Timisius was able to defeat the assassinated armies, and then he brought Gordian with him to train and become an emperor, but then Timisius got sick and died. He was replaced by Philip the Arab who began to plot against Gordian by secretly restricting food supplies to sabotage one of Gordian's campaigns and then put all the blame on Gordian. As Gordian's position became precarious, he called on the soldiers to make a vote between him and Philip and the army voted for Philip. Philip then had Gordian executed and then he went back to Rome to celebrate its 1000th birthday before he got killed a few years later after a battle with Decius. Decius would then become emperor for only two years before he got defeated and killed in battle against the Goths. A governor named Trebonianus Gallus then became emperor and promptly made peace with the Goths, but a few years later the Sassanids attacked and the Goths returned to ravage Roman lands again. Gallus had given a man named Valerian command of the legions in Raetia to use against the Sassanids, while a governor named Emilius Emilianus used the legions in Pannonia against the Goths. After Emilianus defeated the Goths, he proclaimed himself emperor and then he rushed to Italy and killed Gallus. 
When Valerian's army came to avenge Gallus, Emilianus' troops had turned on Emilianus and killed him, which left Valerian as emperor. Valerian then made his son Gallinus co-emperor and used his legions to attack the Sassanids, but his legions suffered a plague before they got ambushed and defeated. Valerian was captured and when he died, the Sassanids skinned his corpse and hanged it as a trophy. Afterwards, Gallinus had to contend with many revolts and external invasions, so he put his own son as Emperor of the West, but his son was overthrown and killed in a revolt by a general named Postumus, who then created his own empire with the Gallic provinces. Fortunately for Gallinus, Postumus spent most of his time fighting the Germans and left the empire alone. In the east, the Romans managed to force the Sassanids to retreat and a Palmyrian army led by the king Odonathus had ambushed and destroyed the Sassanid army. Gallinus had created a large mobile cavalry force to quickly reinforce his legions along the front. Against all odds, Gallinus managed to hold the remaining parts of the Roman Empire despite the frequent invasions and revolts. However, his new cavalry force revolted and killed him. He ruled for a chaotic 15 years before being replaced by General Claudius. Around the same time, both Postumus and Odonathus had died. Postumus' kingdom kept having its leader replaced while Odonathus was replaced by his wife Zenobia, who then invaded Egypt. Claudius was able to defeat the Goths and try to retake the western part of the empire, but he died of a plague. He was replaced by Quintilius, I mean Aurelian. Several Germanic tribes had invaded the empire again until Aurelian defeated them and integrated them into his army. Aurelian then marched south and defeated the armies of the newly formed Palmyrian Empire, and then he besieged Palmyria. The Queen Zenobia tried to escape during the siege, but she was captured, which induced the city to surrender. He forgave the Palmyrians and left, but they revolted again, so he turned back and besieged the city. After they surrendered again, he kicked out the inhabitants and destroyed the city. He then traveled west and recaptured the Gallic provinces. However, his reign was cut short by an administrator named Eros, who was afraid of being caught in corruption charges, so he forged a fake list of people Aurelian was planning to kill and sold it to the Praetorian guards. The guards panicked and killed Aurelian before discovering that the document was fake, so they tortured Eros to death. By the end of Aurelian's reign, the empire had retaken all its lost territory, except Dacia, which was left to the Goths. The position for emperor had ended up in limbo for eight months before falling to a senator named Tacitus, who complained that he was too old to become emperor, but they chose him anyways, and he died a few months later. The position then fell on Florinus, who was in power for two months and twenty days, and did nothing worth remembering. A general named Probus then became emperor, but he had to face a couple of revolts from other aspiring emperors and invasions from various Germanic tribes, but Probus managed to defeat them all. One aspiring emperor was even assassinated before his revolt even started. As peace returned to the empire, Probus decided to use his idle troops to improve rivers, plant vineyards, and to construct buildings, temples, and palaces. While draining a swamp near the city of Sirmium, his troops became incensed by all the heavy labor, so they mutinied and stabbed him to death. He was replaced by his Praetorian prefect named Carus, and Carus made his own sons, Numerian and Carinus, subordinate emperors. War broke out between the Romans and the Quadi and Sirmacian tribes, of which the Roman legions, led by Carus and Carinus, had defeated them. Carus then left Carinus in charge of the west while he marched east with Numerian. He then invaded the Sassanid Empire and defeated their armies before he got struck by a bolt of lightning and died. Numerian wanted to continue the campaign, but his superstitious soldiers demanded they retreat. Along the way, Numerian got sick and died, but his Praetorian prefect named Arius Asper had pretended that Numerian was still alive for a couple of months until the troops had discovered that Numerian was dead. The troops then accused Asper of killing Numerian and executed him. They then declared the general Diocletian as the new emperor and marched west to overthrow Carinus. As Carinus was indulging himself with excessive spending and scandalous debauchery, he received news that Diocletian was marching an army against him. Carinus summoned the legions and nearly defeated Diocletian in battle. However, Carinus was assassinated by his own officers who bore the grudge against him for molesting their wives, and Diocletian became emperor of Rome. Seeing that the empire is too big to handle for one emperor, Diocletian decided to make his friend Maximian co-emperor in the west while Diocletian controls the east. Diocletian then changed the title of the emperor from Principate to Dominate, and surrounded himself with numerous servants to imitate the style of the eastern emperors. He had also reorganized administration by increasing the number of bureaucrats in provinces. 
Meanwhile, in the west, Maximian was fighting against the Alamanni tribe when a renegade general seized Britain and created his own kingdom. Maximian then launched an attack to retake Britain, but he was defeated. Diocletian then arranged to have additional co-rulers for succession. Diocletian ruled the east with Galerius, while Maximian ruled with Constantius. Constantius then successfully retook Britain, while Maximian defeated Berber raiders in North Africa. Galerius was defeated by the Sassanids in the east, but he returned with another army that was reinforced with the Goths and defeated the Sassanids, which forced the Sassanid emperor to flee, leaving his treasures and family behind. With all the violence and calamity surrounding the empire, Diocletian went to his priest to get advice from the gods, but his gods didn't answer. The priest told him that the gods would not answer because of the increasing impiety among the Romans. Diocletian tried to appease the gods by demanding that everyone give animal sacrifices, of which many Christians refused, so Diocletian had them persecuted throughout the empire, except the parts controlled by Constantius who chose to protect them instead. When Diocletian got old, he chose to abdicate, ordering Maximian to do the same. They left their position to two new emperors, Valerius Severus and Maximinus Dia. Diocletian then retired to a farm to grow cabbages, while Maximian would continue to yearn for the throne, leaving the empire to the next generation tetrarchy.